So in this video we're going to look at the 600XL which was previously repaired and into this 600XL now that it works is going to go Ultimate One Megabyte which we've done before um, Pokemax uh, which I haven't shown uh, being installed on the channel yet uh, so I'm going to do that in this video and uh, Sophia uh, version 2 so Sophia version 2 outputs VGA DVI component 15 kilohertz RGB and I think that's all configured in software which signal you actually want to get out of it uh, we go so we put all, all the parts for this machine all in here like so and everything there we are all in the little box until we need them so that's the box of goodies that's going to go in this machine so the first thing we're going to do is take off this uh, RF modulator because that is where the aperture is going to be cut in the back uh, for the DVI connector. So now what I normally do anyway is I uh, put a very thin screwdriver in the back here. Okay so I'm using a, a, a larger tip on the iron here the idea that this will just scythe through the solder a lot more easily without having to cook the board. And this is a powerful T12 iron anyway, but uh, this really does help even more. So it's going to heat these side ones. Okay, and that's starting to lift. And we'll lever the back a little bit more. And while it's under tension, we'll heat the sides again. That's down to go. So with the smaller tip, these uh, the plate through on these holes is it's liable to just fall off because it just gets heated and heated and heated repeatedly. Really, bad. oh, it's out. Right. So as you can see, it's starting to come away here. I've got it released from the back. Now I can use the back to lever the sides out and. That's starting to go. That side's gone. You can just feel it pop. Obviously, when it uh, parts company with the top. Actually, we can attack it from the top now a little bit because it's just held on by the sort of a, a trail of uh, solder. Just burn that away. So that's now free. Oh, a lovely job. Yes, well worth putting this chisel tip on here. It's, it just stresses the board a lot less. Makes for a neater job. Let's see. Yank those wires out. There we are. That's out. Jonathan can't. Can't. I think you've spelled that wrong, Andrew. <laughs> I think you want a U in there. <laughs> I've been called. I've been called worse. Right. I'll use this tip uh, for now on here. Get a bit of heat back in here anyway. Yes, yeah, I'm live streaming. Yeah, you can probably hear your bloody voice. <laughs> I yeah. Dear me. Try not to keep it. Uh, try not to have X-rated, X-rated, X-rated talk. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Anyway, where was I? Where was I? Uh, right, get your own channel. Right, what? get your own channel. <laughs> iPhone channel. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, where's the mute button when you need it? There we go. So we've got the bulk of it out there. Have a little look at the back. Let's give this a nice clean with. Isopropyl. We should probably do the RAM upgrade, but the only reason that I'm a little bit 
nervous about that is I don't know if I have any RAM chips. What do we have here? That looks to be just what we're looking for, I think. Right, so we're going to have to lift up a couple of legs here. Right, so we've lifted that leg on that one. And on this one here, we're going to lift leg, pin, um, so that's pin 10. Make sure I've got that right. Obviously, I'm going to solder to these and lift them out, but I'm going to uh, heat shrink them as well. And we need to lift another leg. So we're going to lift that leg up. And we're going to solder jumper to that one as well. I'm going to straighten the edge of this out. There's two different ways of doing this. I'm just doing this the way that I did it on every other 600XL I've modified because it seems to me that that's the least likely to cause problems. Tin my little wire. Right, so I'm going to tin, tin these chips. That's on there. And that's just got to do a little hop across to there. So I think we're going to be about that long. Pick this up. Using my tremendously powerful hot air station. Powerful station. Powerful best hot air station. Da, 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 da. I found a simpler scheme to go to 64k. I sent it to you by email. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Wakan, Wakin. Uh, I appreciate that very much. I'll I'll give that a try sometime. I would have done it here actually. Um, but it's too late now because I've done it this way. Never mind. Look at the zoom action on this. So we can put the... and then we can just put the blue tack there. And the wire is held perfectly in position so we can solder it there. It's marvellous. So this goes here. That looks quite reasonable. We'll have a little close look at this on the assumption that it works. There we are. That's better. So this is using those RAM chips of dubious provenance. I don't know where they came from. And it does work. There we go. F R E O 37902. There we go. Boom! <laughs> Alright, so having done the 64K uh, RAM upgrade on this machine. Um, I think we might as well prepare it for um, Sophia 2 and Pokemax. So we might as well run left to right, replacing these sockets. Um, we might as well use the desoldering gun because it's be been performing so well lately. Uh, but first, while I'm waiting for that to warm up, we'll just put a little bit of extra uh, solder on the underside of the socket. It should help greatly. It's come off cleanly, I just need to clean those holes out. Check the traces and then we will be good for a new socket. So I'll just solder this in with the um, Sophia already in the socket. And the machine should of course power up with Sophia in uh, and not wired up to the jack. Since Sophia emulates GTIA. Sophia 2 does anyways, so we are told. Make sure that's nice and flat. There it is. So let's give it a try and see if it works. Right, let's turn it on. And we get a grey screen. So it does indeed work. So stage one, no problem.
So just the MMU and the US ROM to do now. So we'll race through them and get to installing some of this stuff. All right, so I've done a little bit of off-camera work. If you want to see the intricacies of how to fit um, Ultimate One Megabyte in the 600 XL, uh, there is a video dedicated to that on the channel uh, from a few months ago, which goes through the whole thing again. Uh, but I've done the uh, I've done quite a bit of work on this. I've done the drilling and I've done uh, the cutout in the back of the case for the Sophia adapter and for the. Uh, three and a half millimeter audio jack that we're going to need to get stereo audio out of the machine because it isn't going to be on the uh, DVI connector. So I've done that. That was a messy job. So I did all got all that out of the way, clear, cleared up, um, drilled two holes in uh, the board here for the ultimate. I got a little bit close to this via here. Um, so I just had to scrape that away just so that it doesn't touch the the shaft of the screw when it goes in but that's going to be fine so I just scraped that pad on either side of the hole so that's going to fit very nicely indeed so what I'm going to do now is uh, rig up the uh, wiring for the uh, ultimate okay so I'm going to see if I can whip the solder out of that hole uh, it appears I was able to do so. Let's clean away the uh, flux and get that wire in the hole. Oh yes, lovely job, lovely job. And I'm actually going to have to make a notch in the little pylon. It's a very, very tight squeeze this, but it all goes together beautifully. And that should go straight through there. Like so, there we are, lovely. And I'll use the old blue tack trick to hold it in place nicely and just the solder there. Really, it should be pushed over towards the other side, it's gonna get in the way somewhat. So trim that flush. And I think that's going to be okay. Oh, that's a tight squeeze. It's going to be a nylon washer on top of this. My God, it's, uh, it is an incredibly tight squeeze. split all the wires because I did the usual trick of attaching the wrong thing to the wrong thing so rather than start again from scratch I've just swapped the two outer wires around never mind it's a shame Holt is really only present between uh, the CPU and the Antic chip so there's no vias uh, further back uh, to pick this one off from and of course it's not on the PBI bus which is a little bit unfortunate as far as I remember, anyway. There we are. <laughs> Couldn't get much tighter than that, could it? So hopefully it'll all work and nothing will short out. All right, so other screw, put nylon washers on both, on the bottom. Okay, now the way these ribbon cables, this one, I'll tidy the cables up later, I know I always say that, but I always actually do it. Um, so the way this is gonna go on, is like so, like so. The whole problem with this kind of computer is that you're constantly trying to save space and so you really can't afford to... Um, you can't have really afford for any standoff or anything to be longer than it needs to be because you're gonna have trouble getting the lid down. So if we turn it on now it should hopefully work. Turn it on. And there you go, it boots. Uh, still grey screen of course because I still haven't done anything about the colour. I will get around to that. Uh, this should of course boot straight to the ultimate one megabyte BIOS menu. Uh, yeah, Take the battery out before you ship it and put it back in. Right. 
So the next thing I want to do, bearing in mind I've done the cutout on the back of the case here, is fit the uh, connector for the Sophia. I'll have to test the DVI even. So I've decided, well I've done some measurements already, that the cutout at the back of the case dictates that the uh, little pylons here, these little uh, three pin uh, headers, uh, are going to need to be uh, a total of a five millimeter gap between the motherboard and the bottom of the adapter. Let's check they line up properly. And this one's still a bit of a tight squeeze, so I've got more solder to get rid of this this gap here. If, it, if it'll come out. There, I think that's got it. Right, so I can solder the rest of the uh, legs here. And this is going to look great when it's in. It really does look smart. And of course we need one on the front here. And this is one that's especially difficult to get, but actually not too difficult. So I'll just do one leg and then hopefully straighten it up after that. Uh, uh, go on. Right, straighten it. That's straight, nearly straight. A bit more. That's straight. And so now we'll check that it lines up in the holes in the motherboard, which it does. Good, good. So then we can go ahead and do the rest of the pins. Good, that looks reasonable. And then I want this to be five millimeters off the deck. In fact, I'm gonna push this right the way back to the top because I don't want to be governed by where the, when I'm adjusting the height of this, I don't want to be governed by that piece of plastic in the way uh, on any of the sides. So here we can now drop this into here. And as you can see, the legs come through the bottom of the board like so and so we can flood fill those with solar but I'm not going to do that until I get the height more or less correct so if I solder one leg at the back and then I'll test fit and see what it looks like yeah that'll hold that one just adjust it by sight that looks about level. So we do a couple of the side pins as well without knocking it, preferably. There we go. That'll do. And there. Uh, that'll do. Right, so it's in. And so I'd say it's a bit high actually. It's come out a bit high. Try again. And once I get this right, just from the back, visually, I'll just be able to go for it with the rest of the pins. Now it's a bit low. Right, so now I've got this finally at the correct height. I can fill these with uh, solder. I don't really need to flood fill them, I might not actually until I'm 100% sure everything's correct. One connector, finally. Oh, and it looks just as neat from the inside as it does from the outside, so it's really starting to take shape now. Um, now I've got also the um, board mounted uh, audio jack which is going to sit here going to be lovely. I'm going to have to glue it in upside down because there's just a lot of traces under there but that's your, your audio jack. It'll be sitting on a little bit of glue so it should just float up to the correct height there. So I, as I say I'm going to have to glue that to the board. I'm not absolutely over the moon about that. What I'd normally do is drill holes and put all the, uh, all the pins through but there's such a lot going on there. I could do it um, I might do it, but uh, I don't know. I'm disinclined actually. There's going to be a lot of a lot of jumpers to solder on there if I start drilling in, into it. <laughs> Right, 
Okay, so when we're installing Pokemax, uh, we have a choice of cores. Uh, we've got SID emulation, <laughs> we've got Kovox, we've got PSG, Quad Pokey, etc. Uh, and a lot of the different cores require different signals on this uh, seven way header here. We can ignore the first one because that's specific to uh, the 1088 XEL, but we've got another six um, external. Uh, signal connectors. I'm going to solder this uh, connector on at some point and I'll also populate the header here so that I can flash the appropriate core uh, because I I made sure these people uh, the customers bought um, the bigger chip uh, and that gives them uh, license to have whatever core they want on their whatever set of features so they've paid for whatever they're going to get uh, from Retronics uh, so no problem there, but uh, I, I like to keep things flexible because on at least one of the cores you don't actually get uh, the key click, uh, the GTI audio. You don't actually get it through the stereo output. Uh, so that's something to consider. So we need up to four dress lines, which is A4 through A7. Uh, and I'm going to take those from uh, this little array of Vs here to take the, uh, the ultimate back off. It doesn't have to travel far, it just has to travel down to uh, the chip which is going to be down here, the Pokemax rather. So we can chop these fairly short actually, I think we'll chop them about there. Gives you a bit of leeway with it. Uh, the dress lines are up, they run on here from AO, A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, A7, A8, A9, A10 etc. Uh, so there's a little subset of the address bus there which is quite useful and that means that when we come to actually plug the Pokemax board in we can just pick and choose um, what core we actually want and we probably won't use the wired uh, connection to ultimate because that just because that core is fairly limited it's not going to really allow you to do much over all the, the solder out of those holes without too much problem. I clear now and I will clean that up. Yeah that's totally not gonna work is it? I'll do the back first. <laughs> this might be a better idea. Yes, that's a better idea. Be very careful for shorts on these as well, because they're very, very narrowly spaced, of course. And there we are. You'll know if the address bus got shorted because the machine won't start. So there's our signals, all that we could possibly need for Pokemax. Now we need to do our uh, audio jack I think before we put the board in and the connection is GTIA audio right so after a good deal of trial and error uh, I have done what I suggested I was going to do and glued this uh, audio jack upside down on the board um, I keyed the keyed the board first uh, the actual fiber of the board with a knife so I'm hopeful it's going to be reasonably strong. Yes, yeah, so I've lined it up uh, with the holes drilled in the case. So I'll show you what that's going to look like. Right, so that's our audio jack and DVI connector. So the two outer pins on here are the uh, left and right audio channels. So we need another couple of wires. Um, it's not going to have to be too long. The audio returns, I can leave it disconnected, but I need to connect that uh, ground the shield, I'll need to connect that to ground on the motherboard. Okay. Okay, so we've got our audio signal wires. Look for a convenient ground spot. Uh, down here would do, I think. So it looks like the back of that resistor is actually ground. That would be a nice little spot to... Uh, wire it to actually. Come on. 
I don't think that's on. Now I should be able to put this uh, this uh, pylon back on. Now this wire has to come through this little gap here. Right, and I'm sure I haven't trapped anything else. That should go on, which it does. And that's it, clicked into place. Good. And then we can thread the left and right audio around the front here. Okay, so let's, let's grab the bell. And that is pin 15 of GTIA, I believe. It's on a capacitor somewhere. Oh, there it is, right there. We can get GTIA audio from there. Right hand side of that cap. Okay, so I've soldered my uh, GTI audio out wire uh, to the right hand side of that capacitor. So I think we've got pretty much all the signals we need now for Pokey Max. I've soldered this header on here. Uh, now I need to make myself a seven way uh, or a six way um, DuPont connector. We need to know what core we're going to use before we actually know how to wire things up. The stereo outputs don't change, but other things do. Uh, so I think we'll go through the Pokemax uh, documentation a little bit just so that I can explain to you exactly what I mean by that. Alright, so here we've got the Pokemax user guide and I just wanted to run you through this a little bit just to show you uh, why I have all these different arrangements when it comes to the wiring because some of the wiring is dependent on the choice of core. When installed as above it will function as mono Pokey no matter which version you purchased additional connections are required for stereo and higher versions so we can put the thing in um, without any of these extra connections and it will work as a, as a manual pokey so the different cores we've got here um, we've got stereo version with auto control uh, so that top pin uh, right audio 5 volt and that is for I'll zoom in this a little bit for 1088XL only, so we can disregard that. Uh, I'm disregarding this ground as well. So then coming down here, so we skip ground and we've got A4. So as you probably know, you need A4 for stereo pokey um, to give you that extra granularity in the pokey address space so you can address the second chip. And we've got GTIA in uh, stroke bell on the last pin there so that's the most simple core basically now we've got stereo version with ultimate one megabyte control and that's as above but this previously unused pin here goes to the uh, mo pin on your ultimate one megabyte which you can do but now we've got um software control methods on pokemax which kind of makes that redundant because we've got a plug-in for Ultimate One Megabyte, which does away with this signal entirely. So the Ultimate One Megabyte BIOS controls the features of Pokemax in a much more sophisticated manner than simply turning on and off stereo with one input. Uh, it can control all the, the features um, via software control, so we probably won't go for this one. Uh, we've got stereo version with Covox, so this doesn't have the Ultimate One Megabyte control and the Covox options you'll see in the default Ultimate One Megabyte uh, plugin won't have any effect here. Um, so at this point, basically from this arrangement here, stereo version with Ultimate One Megabyte control, that basically acts the same as a simple stereo board or the, what Lotharic was selling. as a a Gumby stereo board if you like with that switch um, to turn it on and off. Beyond that we need uh, software control uh, for Ultimate One Megabyte to turn everything on and off because we've got more stuff. So anything beyond that basic sort of uh, Gumby stereo control we need the proper um, Pokemax plug-in for Ultimate One Megabyte because that gives you access to everything. You can control all the features of the uh, Pokemax. Well, most of them anyway. You, you have a um, Mark wrote a, a configuration program which allows you to uh, set really everything, but the most common things you'll want to turn on and off 
uh, on the fly, so to speak. And then we've got Quad uh, with auto control. So we've got four Pokies now. We've still got GTI in. Now we've got Quad with auto control. No Kovox, but we do have four Pokies now. And we've still got GTI audio. And then we've got Quad with Kovox. And here we lose GTI audio, unfortunately. So really, um, now, and as you see, you've got A4 and A5 there, A4, A5, and A7. Now, there's also SID emulation, there's PSG, there's stuff that's not even talked about here, uh, which uses different combinations of uh, A5, A6, and A7, which is why I wired them up uh, in the first place. But fundamentally, I think it's going to be a choice between these two much depends on how important it is that to the user that they get the key click through the stereo output I miss it when it's not there personally but uh, we will see as you can see I'm well you can probably see I'm cleared up now and uh, <clears throat> I did a little bit of off-camera work and we have uh, basically a working system I had to make a couple of changes um, First change I had to make to get the lid down on this machine, I keep forgetting about this with uh, 600XLs is the very limited uh, clearance <coughs> under the keyboard. So I redid those cables um, and took the strain relief clips off. Just makes them a little bit more uh, fragile, prone to damage when you're pulling them out, but we shouldn't be taking this apart uh, too much. Um, so we've got the... Uh, stereo output wired up here on the little connector it goes all the way along here and all the way along here to our Pokemax board and you remember those uh, address lines I picked off before um, so we've got uh, a let me think now let me think I think we've got a6 and a7 left spare at the moment so left audio right audio ground which we haven't connected GTI um, audio, A4 and A5. Uh, I have attached the uh, jumper here because I did actually change the core on the Pokemon. He's got GTI audio and quad Pokey. <laughs> now my personal Pokemax did arrive with a, an all core, all features kind of uh, setup on it, which required four uh, address lines. <clears throat> and there is a way to do that by patching into the chip select on the Pokey chip. Um, which you can actually do without uh, cutting anything permanently. One of these resistors here, I forget which one it is on this machine, uh, if you just lift one side of it, and then A7 or A6, I think A7, uh, goes to the chip select input on here. But uh, I don't know whether the owner of this computer wants all that stuff. Um, as I say, you lose GTI audio, which is a bit of a shame. Right, so let's pop the machine back in the bottom case. Oh, the other thing I did was, uh, which I've already made a video on this previously, uh, is I hooked up the Chroma. And the S-Video on this machine is absolutely terrific. Again, the 600XL. I removed, um, I removed a cap there, which was making the picture blurry. I call it the blurring cap. I think the lid will stay shut when it's, uh, <coughs> I can't imagine what could possibly be snagging now. Right, so I'll boot the machine uh, with uh, S-Video output, so you can see what that looks like. I think it looks absolutely spectacular. Just by removing that cap, I mean it was... When, before I hooked up the chroma, after I took that cap off, there was kind of a zigzaggy effect and uh, now it just looks superb. Really impressed with that. I was dazzled, I thought, for a moment. I'm not joking, I thought for a moment I had mixed up the outputs. Um, it's not quite as good as DVI, of course, when you actually look properly, but when you first turned it on and I thought, hang on, what? Uh, uh, that can't be... S video it's very very close to UAV standard I'm serious it's very close to UAV standard this okay so that's your S video output of extreme close-up I mean look at that fantastic a stock 800 XL 
I mean, I don't know what it would look like on a CRT. I mean, there's a self-test. It's very, very sharp, very nice. Anyway, you get the idea about how good um, S video looks. So let's now switch over to DVI. Oh, missed it. There we go. Right. DVI coming up. So that's DVI output uh, in the self test. I mean, it's super sharp, it's fantastic. So that's, uh, you can see what I mean about the heft of the characters. It's, uh, this is Sophia, of course, Sophia 2. Possibly the first Sophia 2 to go into a 600XL, I don't know. So it's pretty obvious that video quality is pretty nice now. So what I think we'll do is we'll do a firmware update. Make sure everything's turned on that we're gonna need. Okay, so let's get this updated to the new firmware and then we can um, put the Pokemax plug-in and hopefully it'll work. So uh, let's do that now. So Right, you flash. We'll just do the whole ROM. Oh god, you can't even manage to visor 5! Jesus. Okay, so let's power cycle and we should get the new stuff. Let's set the clock. So as you can see, this has detected the stereo board um, but not in a manner that it can actually control, uh, which is why it's greyed out. This customer has ordered side 3 as well, which we've got here. So um, I am now going to apply the latest pre-release Ultimate 1 Megabyte firmware that's going to work with his side 3 cartridge. And hopefully his Pokemon as well. Okay, main BIOS. TBI BIOS. That one. There we go. So it's detected Pokemax. Yes. Hurrah. Um, it's detected Pokemax and it has detected that we have uh, Pokies. We should have Quad. Excellent. So we'll have Jewel for now and a couple of other settings that we've got there. So yes, he's got a Quad Pokey at the moment. So I'm going to have to ask him what he wants. But that's a good sign. It shows that things are basically working. It picked up Pokemax. And we've got the uh, core number there, this being the larger chip, the M08. Now regarding Sophia 2, I have downloaded the uh, hardware register description for Sophia 2, just to see what we can actually do with it. Uh, there may be a, a means of actually detecting the hardware uh, in software, which would be quite interesting because then we could actually support it in the Ultimate One Megabyte firmware, which is always something I'm keen to do. Uh, this is an interesting one, high res BC, high res bicolor, so you can get uh, a distinct color as opposed to just a luminance in graphics mode 0 or uh, graphics mode 8 uh, with this bit set. Uh, we've got V-gate as well, which is a, a way of trimming the scan lines to get rid of uh, crap at either side of the play field on an extra wide screen. Oh, you get 16 level luminance for all graphics modes. Normally it's, of course, 8. Um, there, oh, we've got non-volatile memory. Ah, here we go. So we've got DO1E. This register indicates a Sophia 2 device presence. The constant value is S. So we need to do the unlock special features enable. And then we can probe for this. Oh, that's good. 
find out that we've got Sophia and then offer control of some of the extra features. So this is very good. It would probably be a good idea, while I've got this machine here, to write a plugin for it. Uh, how does that sound? I think I'll try and do that this weekend. So I'll have to be quick, but I don't have a Sophia 2, personally. This is the only one I've got, and it's not mine, so I'm going to have to act quickly. Might as well, though. Nothing's going to happen until next Monday now, so it's the weekend. So we'll see if we can maybe just offer control of the uh, high-res bicolor V-gate uh, one or two other things. That would be cool. And then we can send this machine back with the ultimate one megabyte bristling with features, just absolutely oozing functionality for a oh, I'd be absolutely over the moon. Right, so hopefully uh, I'd better wrap that up there before I've got so much footage that I don't know what to do with it. I uh, hope you enjoyed that look at Sophia 2 and Pokemax in... Uh, an Atari 600 XL but yeah I mean a powerful little machine this and I think it's turned out very nice indeed if we uh, I haven't really showed you from the back properly I should probably do so I think it's turned out very nicely indeed all works which is nice it's had quite a lot done to it this little one it's um, it's got a new CPU it's got <laughs> ultimate one megabyte it's got Pokemax and it's got Sophia 2 DVI output uh, and a 64k RAM upgrade and really excellent S video output as well uh, in case that's ever needed. So yes I hope you enjoyed that one and I will um, catch you in the next video after I've uh, somehow managed to edit this down into a, a palatable sized video. So if you're still here you watched it so <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it and uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.